Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. When I mention the words lost continent, what comes to mind? Atlantis, right? You know, the mythical continent that the ancient Greeks wrote about. They were said to be an advanced and enlightened civilization for their time. It was also believed that the whole place met a tragic end with the ocean consuming it whole and erasing remnants of its people's culture and legacy from existence. Of course, no one really knows for sure whether or not the Atlanteans truly existed as a thriving civilization at some point in our ancient past and if the land they inhabited really had been swallowed by the ocean. And until now, people are still fighting over this issue heatedly with neither side having any intention of standing down. But did you know that the tale of the lost city of Atlantis is not the only story involving a sunken land and advanced ancient civilization? For example, a similar tale has been told in India, although it is definitely the less popular one compared to the myth of Atlantis. This lesser known legend of another lost continent is known as the Kumari Kandam. So let's talk about it. The Kumari Kandam is supposedly a lost Lost continent located south of modern day India that occupied a large portion of the Indian Ocean. Also referred to as Kumari Kentam and Kumari Nadu, this massive landmass below the Indian subcontinent is believed to be the home of an ancient Tamil civilization before a catastrophe caused it to sink deep into the sea. The Tamil people are a Dravidian ethnic group whose ancestry can be traced back to Tamil Nadu of India and Sri Lanka. Tens of millions of individuals today identify as Tamilans, making them not only one of the oldest but also largest existing ethno-linguistic cultural groups today. Some of these Tamalans say that the missing Tamal continent of Kumari Kandam is what used to connect the continent of Africa and the landmass of South India. And for the last two centuries, they have declared that, that this legendary continent is also the hypothesized lost land of Lemuria, which was developed in the 1890s by Western scholars. And this brings us to the latter part of the 19th century, when several scholars in the US and Europe were puzzled by the geological similarities between India, Madagascar, and Africa. For example, English geologist Philip Sclater pondered over the possible reason why there is a significant presence of lemur fossils in Madagascar and India, but not in the Middle East or mainland Africa. Sclater went on to publish an article in 1864 titled The Mammals of Madagascar, in which he proposed a hypothesis suggesting that Madagascar and India used to be a part of a larger landmass he called Lemuria. Sclater's Lemuria hypothesis was initially welcomed by members of the scientific community as an acceptable explanation to the way lemurs could have migrated in Madagascar and India in the distant past. However, the theory was eventually discarded after the continental drift theory became the widely accepted theory in modern times. Nevertheless, the concept of a lost continent below southern India continued to remain popular until the 20th century, especially among the Tamil nationalists who believed Lemuria was the same lost continent they referred to as the Kumari Kandam. According to the Tamil revivalists of the 20th century, Kumari Kandam was the land where where the Pandian kings once reigned and where the first two Tamil literary academies known as Sangams were established. And in the 1920s, these Tamil revivalists tried to reduce the domination of the Indo-Aryans and Sanskrit by claiming that prior to the disappearance of Lemuria, it was actually the long-lost Kumari Kandam that was the original homeland of the Tamilans and the birthplace of their civilization, language, and culture. The Tamil nationalists did not simply regard the lost land of Kumari Kandam as the home of an ancient Tamil society, but as the cradle of human civilization. They described it as an utopic society where the continent's enlightened citizens were dedicated to higher learning, trade, and commerce, and exploration of the rest of the world. They had established an egalitarian and a democratic government that allowed the economy to flourish and its people to thrive. However, when the continent of Komari Kandam was lost and the ocean swallowed it whole, the Tamil people had no choice but to migrate to different parts of the world where they established new civilizations. So how did they know this? Well, various Tamil and Sanskrit literary works from ancient and medieval times contain legends about a land located south of India that was consumed by the ocean. A catastrophic event believed to have been caused by a tsunami or by a devastating flood. For example, a commentary in the Irene Akapuro, which is written on Tamil poetics from the medieval times, mentions the Pandian kings of the early Tamil dynasty and their efforts to form three Sangams that lasted for thousands of years. The commentary also reveals that two of these Sangams were seized by the ocean, which ultimately led to the 
destruction and loss of many ancient writings. But it is important to note, however, that none of these ancient texts or medieval commentaries referred to this lost land that was seized by the sea as Kamari Kandam. And none of these literary works have also stated that Kamari Kandam was big enough to qualify as a continent. Because it turns out that the term Kumari Kandam first appeared in the 15th century Tamil version of the Hindu scripture Skanda Purana. And according to cultural historian Sumathi Ramaswani, the Tamil nationalists used the word Kumari, which means a virgin or maiden, to symbolize their belief in the purity of the Tamilan language and culture prior to their association with the Hindu Aryans. And now let's talk about Lemuria. Because the concept of Lemuria is largely recognized by mainstream scholars as a debunked hypothesis today, many experts have frowned upon the alleged attempts of Tamil writers to use the pseudo-scientific theory to validate sort of unverifiable alternative history. And some historians regard the Kumari Kandam as nothing more than mere fiction founded on mythology and really not legitimate scientific research. Moreover, according to geologists, even if the continent drift theory is set aside and the Lemurian continent did exist at some point in the past, its submersion or dismemberment would have taken place tens to hundreds of millions of years ago during the Mesozoic era. That's why many believe geological theories like the Lemurian hypothesis should not really have anything to do with events in human history that supposedly occurred only a few thousand years ago. I personally do believe that when it comes to dating, when it comes to history, especially really ancient history, especially undocumented history, there's far more that we don't know than we do know. So could a continent have disappeared into the ocean? Absolutely. Do I think it's the lost continent of Lemuria? I have no idea. What I do believe is that in every single legend, every single myth, every single story, there is a varying degree of truth to them. And the only thing to do is do your research, listen to different people's opinions, and then make a decision for yourself. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think the lost continent of Lemuria really existed? Why and why not? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.